You're about to listen to Kelly Martin Speaks. I'm your host, Kelly, and the author of When Everyone Shines But You, a mental health and self-acceptance blogger and a recovering darkness addict. I have experienced intense anxiety, deep depression and life trauma, but I'm coming out of the other side now. Darkness was a comfort zone for me for a long time, and it felt safer than the light. So in this podcast, I share with you my journey into the light and how I move through challenge in an empowering way. I'll share with you tools and nurturing ways to embrace your humanity. I was once a shy, scared introvert, afraid to speak, but that's all changing. Let's take this journey together and learn to fly. Hi there, welcome back to Kelly Martin Speaks. I'm your host, Kelly Martin, and this is episode 59. Now, the title of this podcast may have thrown you quite a bit. You might have thought, how on earth could pleasure be pain? And it's a topic that I am quite boggled with myself, and I I sat here thinking, how can I talk about this? And So I'm really just going to wing it and hopefully intuition will step in based on a quote that I saw from a teacher called Byron Katie. Now Byron Katie said, All pleasure is pain until I understand. Then I am the pleasure I was seeking. I am what I always wanted. Pleasure is a mirror image of what we already have before we look away from what really is. When we stop seeking pleasure, the beauty concealed by the seeking becomes evident. It's so simple and clear. What we wanted to find from pleasure is simply what is left behind or beyond all of the stories. Now, I remember somebody else said this a while back, and forgive me for not crediting the person. He said something that those who are always seeking happiness will always be unsatisfied. And I think in a way, this is what Byron Katie is hinting at in that we live in a society where that where we are encouraged to seek out pleasure sources we're encouraged to seek out happiness in some way shape or form from television from radio from magazines and movies we're shown the highlights of life uh Social media is ripe with this. We are shown the pleasurable sides of people's lives primarily. Um, For example, right now it's the summer in the UK and Facebook is filled with people sharing their holidays and vacations overseas. So we are bombarded by what we think we should be seeking and that which we are seeking is something that is an escape from where we are. We may feel that what we have in our present reality is not enough and that what other people have is so much better. For example, the saying, the grass is always greener on the other side. We think that from the perspective of where we are now, but it's generally not true. I know somebody and a friend of mine from my past was exactly the same who constantly seeks out new information, new education, courses, workshops, anything to do to improve themselves. And I was like this in the beginning. I was always looking for that next big thing, that next new thing that would give me answers or a sense of wisdom, a sense of peace, an inspiration. 
anything that would take me away from what I perceived to be very heavy, dark feelings. I thought there must be more than this, so I would always reach out for more. Before I started my spiritual journey, my reaching out included distracting myself with too much television, computer games, uh, eating a lot of very, very sweet foods, and seeking love in the wrong places in short relationships and long relationships. I was looking to other people to bring me the pleasure that I thought I was seeking. So as Byron Katie said, it's not so much that we're seeking, we're thinking that the pleasure is going to bring us what we need. It's the dropping of the story of what we think that pleasure is going to bring us and not realizing that what we wanted all along was always here. And I know you may be listening and thinking, well, right now I'm broke, I haven't got enough money, it's obviously not here. Or right now I'm really lonely, I haven't got any friends, I haven't got a relationship. It's not here. But as I said, I think it was in my last podcast about being alone, the thing we're always seeking is a, a oneness with self, a, a connection to the truth of who we are in the moment and the pleasure-seeking desires that we have are very human. But when we get to the point where we keep seeking and we keep trying to get, as I've said in my book, when everyone shines but you, it's a bit like we're all running down this corridor to get to this door at the other end because we feel that next big thing will be it. It will be the thing that gives us the answers. It will be the thing that brings us the money, the relationships, the health, whatever it is we're seeking. So we're all running and we're encouraged to run by society, by, by media, by our cultures. But it is the people who hang around in that open space, that space between where you are now and where you think you're going to be. You're actually just being here right now in whatever environment you're in. Okay, right. You may not have enough money. You may be having trouble paying bills. You may be scared right now that you financially can't cope. So how on earth do you find peace with that, make peace with that? It's simple. It's what I've said on all my podcasts. It's simple, but it's also challenging. First, you need to acknowledge what is happening. Secondly, you need to accept what's happening. And I don't mean accept it in a drowning way, in an in a, oh, war is me way. It's okay, right now, finances is not great, I'm not coping really well, and that's okay. And from here then, I can make clearer choices. But you can't make clearer choices if you're always rushing to the next door, trying to escape from whatever it is you're trying to escape from, which is here. And that is what the dropping of the story is all about. It's letting go of what we think we need, what we think we should be having and seeing what it is we have. Is there anything here right now that I can not only accept but appreciate? I think I've said it before in earlier podcasts. I live in an area that is quite noisy. It's an urban area in the city. It's it's not my preference on a human conscious level. I would like to live in the countryside when it's the right time. And living in a place that's so close and very compacted with humanity can be a real struggle for me at times. And I've spent a very long time fighting. Fighting my neighbours, the noise that they make. Fighting 
when they sort of light bonfires in their garden, when it's a really windy day and the, the smoke is coming through my house. I fought that. I fought the parties that my neighbours would have. Um, we have some young boys in the street that like to race up and down the street on motorbikes. And it's very, very loud. So on a day when it's sort of a beautiful sunny day and you want to sit in your garden, if you've got one, and you just want to enjoy the relaxed pace of life, it can be really hard for me. But I fought against where I was living for so long. And I fought against what was in my life. I really felt I needed more friends, different relationships, uh, more money, more everything. And I would tie myself up in knots, seeking the pleasure of that. So in a way, you know, pleasure is pain when we're attached, when we're reaching for something because we're not enjoying or embracing what is here right now. So what I did instead was I began to just notice even just the smallest of things I could appreciate in my life. The love and care of my best friend who I share a home with. His sense of humour. We laugh a lot more now than we ever used to. I look in my garden and I see the squirrels and the birds and the insects. And I enjoy the quiet when it's there. And when the noise is there, I am aware of the noise. But I try and focus on the quiet in between the noise. So the other day when it was, it was a really hot day and there was a family that was screaming and shouting all afternoon with a dog barking and then... My other, other neighbour on the other side has a, a young child and another ch young child and they were screaming and shouting and I could feel this anger rising inside of me, this desire for something better, this pleasure-seeking desire of wanting to escape what is. So what did I do? I focused on the sound of the breeze coming through the trees and by doing so, I was able to free myself from the anxiety and rage that was forming. And I also use a, a tool called EFT, which is called Emotional Freedom Technique. If you've never heard of this, I recommend that you go onto YouTube and you look for a gentleman called Brad Yates. He has a lot of videos on EFT that are free. And it's about tapping on acu, acupressure points on the body. Now, I've been having acupuncture recently, so I know how much the energy can move, and it's very similar with EFT. I won't go into it on audio because it's a bit more difficult, but you tap certain points on the face, on the chest, on the hands... And by doing so, you do this as you're feeling whatever feeling you are resisting. Be it anger, fear, sadness, anxiety, whatever it is. And you tap on it. And you don't tap in positive affirmations. You can do that later when you're feeling it. But you simply tap on the points and be really honest with yourself. For example, I could be tapping, I really hate where I live. I hate my neighbours, I wish I could get out of here. Why are they so noisy? And I would swear quite a lot. And I would tap on all the acupressure points until the energy within my body moved and I wasn't so stuck on that record of I must be doing something else, I need to change this, I need to control my reality. And once I did this, and then I focused on the sound of the breeze coming through the trees, the neighbour's noise did not affect me nearly so much. It brought me relief to just simply be here now in my body and know that it's okay, that I'm feeling these things, that I'm human. And yeah, life may not be all candy floss and sugar canes right now. It's, uh, it, has, it has its moments and I guess through... Letting go of our stories, we can begin to 
not attach ourselves to one thing or the other. It's so easy to crave peace and pleasure and joy and love and light and to resist anger and fear and rage and all of these feelings. And when we do this, we're seeing that one is better than the other. But life in its brilliance and in its wisdom it doesn't see one as better than the other. It's just an experience. It's our own perceptions that manipulate and, and hurt ourselves in a way by how we think about our reality. A friend reminded me of something that I heard many years ago about the, the sun that, you know, it it shines on all of the earth. It shines on the trees, it shines on the birds, it shines on the humans, it shines on the concrete cities, it shines on scorpions, it shines on the people that we may not like and the people that we do like. The sun does not have any preference or any judgments about what the sun should shine on. So this is our challenge, our biggest challenge, and if we are able to embrace every experience as an opportunity for growth, for finding a sense of acceptance and peace within, regardless of the challenging situations we're going through. It is then that we really do experience real peace. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on pleasure being pain. I didn't expect to be talking about what I talked about. It was very intuitive and uh, I hope it's, it's given you some understanding and comfort in your struggle that you may be going through right now and help you to choose easy instead. So I hope to hear from you on the podcast sometime. If you're listening on Podbean, please give me some comments and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I really would love uh, feedback or a, a review of my podcast so that I can get my podcast out to more and more people. Until next time, everyone. Bye for now. You've been listening to my podcast, Kelly Martin Speaks. I'd really appreciate your feedback. If you're listening on iTunes, please give me a review. It helps me be seen and heard by those that need it. You can also follow me on kellymartinspeaks.co.uk where you can read my blogs, find out about my book series and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I'm also all over social media. So search for me via Kelly Martin Speaks on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I'll speak to you next week. Bye.